I think one of the best features of QuickBooks Online is the ability to run great reports, financial reports like the balance sheet and the profit and loss statement, but also things like the AR aging report, which is accounts receivable aging, which will help to tell you who is really late on paying you, which is a really good thing to have, AP aging, which is accounts payable aging, which will tell you which bills you haven't paid on time and where you are overdue. And then you can run reports like detailed customer reports and all sorts of things things that can help you make better decisions in your business. So what I want to show you today is how to use the reporting feature in QuickBooks Online. And I'm going to show you some of my favorite reports that I like to run for any business that I'm looking at as a fractional CFO. My name is Hannah Smolinski. I am a CPA and a fractional CFO, and I love playing around with financial technology and figuring out how it can help businesses run better. So I thought I would start this channel in order to be able to just show you guys my favorite features of financial software, explore new financial software and to teach you how to use it and which things are going to be worth your time and which are not. So if that sounds interesting, I hope you will be subscribed to the channel and make sure that you engage with this video, like it if it's helpful and please leave any comments if you have any questions. All right, well, let's get into QuickBooks Online so I can show you guys the reporting module. Okay, here we are in QuickBooks Online. Now you mine might look a little bit different from yours because I am using the brand new user interface face that QuickBooks has rolled out this they've been testing out on different accounts for a while and they have announced that they are going to be moving all accounts towards this new user interface so this is a little different it has more of a horizontal structure on the dashboard and um, you if you've used QuickBooks online before you know that kind of most of the navigation was down the left hand side of the screen they haven't totally gone away with that I did do a video that is like a QuickBooks overview video that kind of shows some of the differences between everything so if you're interested in that you can go and check out that video we'll make sure to link it above um, and put it in the description box below but um, I'm going to show you how to find reporting which is actually on the left hand navigation side um, so over here on the left hand side to scroll over reports and then click on whatever you want here but I'm just going to click on standard reports here we are in the reports um, section I have some things favorited here I have the accounts receivable aging report the balance sheet and the profit and loss now now, these are just going to be in alphabetical order. We can't reorganize these, so it just it is what it is. Um, profit and loss and balance sheet are going to be the things that I use the most for when I'm looking at my own business, when I'm looking at other people's businesses as a fractional CFO, I look at those the most. And then typically once a month, we'll look at the accounts receivable aging as well. And then periodically, we'll be digging into other reports. So um, profit and loss, let's start there because that's where we spend a lot of our time. And I think it's the report that you should get the most familiar with when it comes to you know, running reports and being able to analyze your numbers, look at your spending, look at your income and look at your profit. So this has defaulted to a couple things. So QuickBooks will have some default settings. For example, it will default to your accounting method, which you set up when you um, go to your settings in your business. So it'll default there. Um, it will also default to like what kind of period you have. Right now, this is defaulted to this year to date, which I would never really recommend looking at a profit like profit and loss like this because this is defaulting through August 6 of 2025. But like it doesn't help me to look at a profit and loss that I'm not even sure is complete. Uh, because it's going through like the middle part of in into a couple days into a new month and I don't know if the bookkeeping has been done for that but I do know that the bookkeeping has been done through July 31st because we actually did another video on that and showed you how to do the bookkeeping for a month of transactions so if that um, interest you please go and check out that video we will put it above here and then also in the description box below so if you want to know how to do a full month of bookkeeping you can go and do that so we want to first change the dates here um, we can do this a couple different ways we can change this to this year to last month would give us January through July 31st or we can just manually change the date so if I want to have this actually be um, 7 1 if I just want to look at July by itself 7 1 to 7 31 we can adjust those there so you can either use this reporting period to adjust or you can do um, you know just put in the dates that you want 
So I'm gonna take change it back to this year to last month. And then um, this is great. This gives me a nice year to date profit and loss. I can see all the income. I can roll it up, cost of goods sold, expenses. I can keep this nice and tidy and tight if I just wanna see that simplified version. Or if I wanna see all the detail, I can expand out. Um, there used to be little uh, buttons to expand everything, but um, seems like they have gotten rid of those in all of their new changes, which I don't know if I love that. Um, we do also have an option here for view. There's the normal view, which gives a little bit more space. And then we have a compact view there. And then I did actually see here we have collapse all that gives us the tight version of the PL, just the really high level income, cost goods sold, regular expenses, and then income. And then we have the expanded view. Okay, so we're gonna look at this in the expanded view. It's nice to see. And then you also have a ways to display these things differently. If you had your data organized in different ways, you could display it in different ways. So um, you can do it by, like I actually like to look at a PL by month. So if that's the case, you can see this month by month, which is really nice. I think this is one of my most favorite reports when it comes to a PL report is to see a month by month PL because it gives you that good sense of like what's trending, what's not trending. For example, like the sample company, like if you just looked at July, you would think this was a totally different business than if you looked at the year to date. It just looked like July was a very low month for income, but that does not look normal if you look at the history in the past. So we, you know, that begs the question, what's happening in July that was not happening in the previous months or what wasn't happening in July that was happening in the previous months. Um, so, you know, it's really helpful. I like looking at this uh, report. This is one of my favorite ones to pull. So I wanted to show you guys how to do that one. Um, you can also look at this by day, which I've literally never done before. Um, but if you maybe are a business that has like spikes in sales because of certain days um, in your business, it might be helpful. Quarters is also something that's kind of nice to look at. So if you have, if you set quarterly revenue targets or quarterly expense targets, um, you'd be able to run your PL that way. And then obviously, Obviously, um, weeks and years is an option as well. But months is the most logical because we have a monthly accounting cycle. So we finish an accounting cycle and we can produce a monthly report. So it's the most logical way for us to look at our accounting data. So I wanted to show you that you can filter this further if you'd like to. Um, you can um, filter on a number of different things. I don't really have a good use case to show you guys right now. Um, there is some general options. You can um, make the negative numbers in red if that's helpful to you. For example, like this um, other service income here. Um, and then you can, you know, do a little bit of like reporting stuff. Like you can put your logo and stuff in here and whatnot. So. There's a little bit of reporting customization you can do there as well. Um, but I wanted to show you the profit and loss that you can do here. If you are a business that has different classes, so maybe you have like different business segments and they all have a different class in QuickBooks Online, you can run a total company PL by class, which is really helpful. I like to see that. Um, so yeah, this is this is good. And if you want to compare this to previous periods, so let's say um, I, maybe I don't want to, maybe I want to take off the months, for example, I want to clear that. And then I want to compare this year to date to last year to date, although I don't think there's any data in here for last year. So maybe let's, let's change, let's change this to say just for the month of July. And then let's compare it to previous period. I want to see the dollar change and I want to see the percent change. So July versus June and what are the differences. So obviously there's been a major difference in commissions. Um, there's been a major difference in sponsorships. Um, so this is quite a different month year over year, but you can see the customization because I added in the red, anything that's negative would be highlighted there. Um, but it's nice to be able to have that comparison um, 
area. This is the new view. So if you wanted to see the old view of reporting, they still have this button up here at the top that says switch to classic view. This is the classic view and maybe what you're used to if you've been using QuickBooks Online. So you still have the reporting period and the date range, but this is that new, that display. I much prefer this view actually because the display options are just an easy drop down um, right here, which I prefer. And then the compare is also fairly easy to just check the box here. I don't know why they felt the need to change this to the more modern view, but, and then you can also like ha hide non-zero numbers, but um, this is the old view and then here are the classic view. And then the modern view is just a little bit tighter. Um, I don't know why they think it's better, but this is what it is now. <laughs> so, um, okay. And then you can save as if you'd like to. So if you want to save a copy of this report. So um, let's say, let's, let's do this. So I really liked um, this fiscal year to last month. And then I like the display by month. And yeah, I like that. So I want to have a save as um, profit and loss by month, year to date. I can share this with other people in my organization, but there's this is a sample, so it doesn't matter. But now if I go back to my reports, we should be able to find that under custom report. So there's a custom report, which saves you time. Like if you're gonna be running that report every single month, why not just like standardize it and create a custom report so that it's there and it's ready for you. So let's also look at the balance sheet. I like a balance sheet uh, review. Let's also do this, this fiscal year to last month. You always wanna compare the end of the period um, as of what date to whatever period you're also looking at the PL. So if you're looking at a year to date PL through July 31st, you wanna run your balance sheet on July 31st because they're gonna be reports that work together. Um, they need to be kind of looking at the same time period. Balance sheets are a point in time. So where are the cash balances at a point in time? Where are the assets? Where are the liabilities? Um, so we've got the same options here. We can run the date range. We can change to the accrual method. If you are accrual accounting, you can change the view option all the same. I like kind of like the compact view. Um, and then I like to also compare the balance sheet of oftentimes to like the previous period. So I might look at this one and say, let's look at last month to the previous period and I just wanna see the dollar change. I like to see how cash changed from one month to the next. So if I have that, this looks pretty good. And then I can save as, and I'm gonna... So balance sheet compared to prior month, and I'm going to save that. So now I have some custom reports. I'm gonna go back to some standard reports. I really like the accounts receivable aging report. This is helpful if you have invoiced companies and the longer they are out there, they are aging, so they're getting old. And one of the things we know from years and years and years of accounting is that the longer an invoice is unpaid, the less likely it is to be paid. So it is a problem when you have very old accounts receivables because you raise the risk of things not getting paid. Either that business is having financial trouble or they have um, maybe changed management or maybe they have gone out of business or whatever it might be. Things can happen if you're not getting paid on time. So the idea is that we want to keep our accounts receivable current rather than having old invoices. And then usually you don't invoice until you've done something for a client. So you also means that you've been doing work and you haven't been getting paid, which is also a problem. So you can, um, you know, customize this report as well. There's some options here over here on the side. There's some col column configurations. I'm not going to save that report. I just wanted to show that to you guys. Um, there are lots of general business reports that you can run um, for accounts receivable. You can do it in detail too if you'd like to see the individual invoices on there. Um, if you want to see total customer balances, you can see that. All of your open um, invoices, for example, 
that's pretty helpful. You can see all of your customer data. So this is where if you have a lot of customer data, you can run different reports like sales by customer, summary, you want a phone list, you want to have your sales by product or service. Um, there's a lot of reporting you can do here if you have all that data in your system. I don't have that data in the system, so it's not going to be very helpful for me to show those to you. Um, accounts payable, this is when you have bills out to other people. You can run the same thing where it shows, do you have any outstanding bills that haven't been paid over a long period of time? That's not a great thing for you. You, as a business owner, should be paying your bills on time so you're not um, creating bad relationships with your vendors. Um, or maybe you're managing cash flow and you're trying to you know, monitor that. You know, that's something that we have to do sometimes. Um, so we have lots of reports there. There's employee reports and payroll reports and things like that if you, um, if you need to do that. And then there are some reports specifically that your accountant might ask for, for example, the trial balance or an adjusted trial balance. So you can run that for your accountant if they ask for it. But oftentimes people who have accountants will just give their, um, their accountants access to their QuickBooks account. So um, they can just invite their accountant to have access and then the accountant can come in here and pull whatever they need. And then there's payroll reports as well, but we don't have payroll set up in this. So um, there are some management reports. This is a QuickBooks report. I actually don't usually look at those, but they are here. This is a performance center, kind of shows some of those dashboards. And then this financial planning is kind of new. Um, there is a cash flow, uh, cash flow trend and a cash flow planner, but I honestly don't really give this much. I don't give this much attention because it isn't really helpful <laughs> if I'm perfectly honest. So. Um, I would kind of skip over this financial planning part for a while. I mean, check, check it out if you want to, but really this video is focused on trying to show you like the best reports coming out of QuickBooks Online. Hopefully that gives you a good sense of how to navigate the reporting in QuickBooks Online. If you don't have QuickBooks and you would like to get set up, please be sure to check out our um, link, financialtechlab.com slash QBO to make sure you get 30% off of a full year of QuickBooks Online and a 30 day free trial. So um, check that out if you don't already have QuickBooks and please let us know if you have any questions or comments and um, put them in the comment section below and I will check out those questions and respond. All right, thanks so much. See you guys later.